Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. In this tutorial, we're going to cover one of the typical uh, problem in electrical power distribution where power system engineers or students usually are tasked to find the value of the voltage at the sending end, the regulation of the land efficiency in a short transmission line. Now, a while back, I did a series of tutorial where we discussed the steady state operation and drew a phasor diagram for a short transmission line with either inductive, resistive, and capacitive load. I really recommend that you watch those tutorial if you want to understand how a short transmission line basically operate. So without any further ado, let's get started and determine the value of the voltage at the sending end for this transmission line. Now, the first thing you need to imagine here, this is a three-phase system. This means that if your transmission line is configured in a start configuration, you're going to have a four-wire system. Line one, line two, line three, and a neutral point for your transmission line. So it's always important to visualize what you are trying to solve because good illustration always make things easier to solve and understand the problem statement so here we've got a three-phase system okay so at the sending end here this is your typical power plant and your three-phase star connected transformer transmitting via ryb line one line two line three and at the receiving end you've got the same scenario with your three-phase transformer so now, we need to find the voltage at the sending end, okay? Now, the voltage at the sending end that we need to determine here, it could either be the line voltage or the phase voltage because there are three phases here. And the same applies at the receiving end. But now, the voltage at the receiving end is subject to the voltage drop across a transmission line, which is your VZ, based on the line impedance now in the problem statement we've got a 5 ohm uh, resistance per phase and an inductive reactance per phase of 12 ohm right now the system at the receiving end is basically running at a 20 megavolt ampere of power with a lagging power factor of 0 0.8 okay so the line voltage at the receiving end is 33 kilovolt now these uh, type of problem they basically solve with the per phase parameters you need to solve it per phase because if we assume it is a balanced system then there is no need to really solve it uh, for a three phase uh, configuration because all the values are going to be the same for each phase assuming it's a balanced system so we work out a single line diagram for a single phase so that we can solve our problems okay so to do that we draw the single line diagram here and we end up having a similar uh, diagram that we were analyzing when we drew the phasor diagram for the short transmission line now according to the problem statement this particular resistance value is 5 ohm and this inductive reactance is also a 12 ohm j per phase now, when the switch is closed, you're going to have a voltage here at the receiving end, and that is known as V receiving, okay? And at the sending end, we also have a voltage that we call as V sending, okay? Now, across the line, we've got a voltage drop that is caused by the impedance of the line, and that voltage is known as VZ, now the question here is to find the voltage at the sending end but we are only given the voltage at the receiving end which is also given as a line to line parameters okay but now we're working with the phase parameters okay so we need to find the phase voltage at the receiving end but first the formula to find the voltage at the sending end is basically the voltage at the receiving end plus the voltage drop across the line but what is the voltage at the receiving end per phase that basically this voltage divided by the square root of three 
It's as simple as that. So we find a value of 19.05 kilovolt per phase. So basically, each one of these phase here is carrying a voltage potential of 19.052 kilovolt. Now the next stage is now to basically calculate Vz. Since we now know what is the V receive per phase, if we find Vz, we will know what the voltage at the sending end is. So how do we calculate Vz? Now, this is very simple. Vz is equal to I phase times the Z per phase. Now, we already have the Z per phase here based on the resistance and the reactance per phase. We can find the Z per phase. Now, what is the value of the current per phase? phase okay now to find the current per phase we're going to use the formula of the apparent power since we are told that the system at the receiving end is using about 20 megavolt ampere of power at a lagging power factor of 0 0.8 so which means using this formula we can deduce the value of the line current okay because remember this is a series circuit so the current flowing here i line is the same current that is also flowing here okay now based on that we can say that the line current is s at the receiving end divided by the square root of three times v at the receiving end remember that must be v line at the receiving end not the per phase voltage okay so by the way, if you find this tutorial useful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Simtech channel. That would be highly appreciated. Thank you very much for the support. Great stuff. Now, continuing, we can calculate the I line by simply doing 20 MVA divided by the square root of 3 times 33 kilovolt. That will give us 350 amps. Great. Now, it is important to understand that in a start configuration i line is the same as i phase now a quick illustration we're going to have a star configuration that look like this so this is your neutral point so this is your line one i1 and it's the same current that's flowing there and here we're going to have i2 and it is the same current that also flowing there and here you're gonna have i3 okay and it is also the same current now these are your phases okay these are your phase okay so that phase one phase two phase three and the current flowing onto the line is exactly the same current flowing into the phases this is not the case in a delta configuration so it's very important to understand that great now that we know what is the line current or what is the phase current we now need to know the angle of this phase current. Since the problem statement states that there is a power factor of 0 0.8 lagging. So which means the current is basically behind, the voltage is leading. Okay, so how are we going to determine the angle of this current is very simple. So cos theta here is 0 0.8. That means we can find the angle by taking the inverse cos of 0 0.8 which give us 36.87 degree of angle okay now since it is lagging then we have to assign a negative sign to the angle of the current because it is lagging behind the voltage great stuff does then mean that our line current or our phase current is 350 with an angle of negative 36.87 now, the only ingredient that we need here to calculate our Vz here is the impedance. Now, we know that uh, we've got 5 ohm and 12 ohm for the reactance. It's very simple. We can calculate this impedance since it's given in a rectangular form. We convert it in a polar form simply by using uh, your calculator functions. You can convert it very easily. Okay. Now, after that, we can then combine Vz is the current times the impedance and we find a voltage drop on this transmission line per phase of 4550 volt. 
uh, with an angle of 30.51 degree now this is basically 4.5 kilovolt now we now have everything we need to calculate the voltage at the sending end which then will be given by the per phase voltage 19.052 plus 4,55 with an angle of 30 degree kilovolt now very important the voltage at the receiving end have an angle of zero degree and after working it out you find a per phase voltage at the sending end of 23.088 kilovolt with an angle of 5.74 degree per phase great stuff now the next thing that we need to do we now uh, solve our first question we move to the second question the line regulation now this is very important because if your line regulation is bad that means you need to fix your system okay the line regulation uh, basically determine how consistent your voltage is at a receiving end which means you need a smaller percentage uh, line regulation okay so that you can actually be satisfied but now to calculate the line regulation you have to use the line voltage okay now we already have the voltage at the receiving end uh, line given to us there now we just need to convert the voltage at the sending end per phase to a line parameters that basically just mean by multiplying it to a square root of three then we're going to have 39.98 kilovolt basically 40 kilovolt uh, line to line at the sending end so that basically mean if you measure here across these line one and line two you're going to get about 40 kilovolt in this current configuration okay that means number two the line regulation is v sending line minus v receiving line divided by the v receiving line and that basically means 39.98 minus 33 so we have a line regulation of 21.1 percent okay now this is a percentage of value so you have to uh, multiply it by 100 which we did not specify in the formula great stuff now the last question in our problem here is the efficiency of the line now this is very simple as we all know efficiency is by just dividing the receiving power by the sending power okay so that means p receive divided by p sending that will give us our efficiency and we must use line parameter to do that so we got uh the square root of three times 33 kilovolt times the current the magnitude of the current here 350 times the power factor which is 0 0.8 okay so that is what we have at the receiving end now what is the power at the sending end the power at the sending end is a square root of three times the 39.98 kilovolt times the magnitude of the same current because remember the current here is the same current that you see at the receiving end okay then the angle very important here okay so you have to subtract the angle that you get from the sending end voltage that you calculated this angle here per phase you must subtract the angle of the current okay because that's the current at the receiving end because the angle of that current is determined by the power factor at the receiving end so you subtract that that will basically give you a different uh, power factor at the sending end and that will determine your power at the sending end and this will basically be 16 megawatt at the receiving end divided by 17.84 megawatt at the sending end so you can see that we've got some power that is dropped across the line so your efficiency of the line is 89.69 percent now this is a very uh, typical problem this is a very simple example there are ways in which certain questions can be framed and asked where if you understand how uh, all these parameters interact with each other based on the phasor diagram you, you 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 will get it but if you do not grasp that uh, properly you will find it very difficult
to solve some of the question if they frame it differently so stay tuned uh, for the next tutorial where we're going to be doing some advanced tutorial in these topics until next time cheers